This little monkey wrench was rusted up solid. The handle was split. And the jaws were bent. In other words, a perfect candidate for a resto mod. I started off by grinding away the peening at the base of the handle. I pulled off the wood handle to get better access to the base. It fought me a little bit, but I finally knocked the base off. The top portion of the handle came off a lot easier. I had to work on the lower jaw for a while, but it finally broke free. Here's the monkey wrench completely disassembled. My plan was to go over all the parts with the wire wheel. Here's the parts after the wire wheel. My goal was to get most of the rust off in preparation for an overnight soak in Evaporust. And here's the parts after soaking in Evaporust. The maker's mark was now visible. The Evaporust does a great job on the inside of complex parts like this jaw. You'd never be able to get every nook and cranny in there with wire brushes. I found that the upper jaw was out of square. I used a little Magdad muscle to try to bend it back. I think I improved it. I worked on the lower jaw with a file. I was able to get the jaws to fit up nicely. I went over the parts with my 1x30 sander and the coarse blue Harbor Freight Belt. Here's the wrench after the coarse belt. I avoided the side of the jaw with the maker's mark and this bar. Here it is after the finer 120 grit belt. I used my Dremel and these sanding drums on the tough to reach curved areas. The little sanding drums are handy for these spots. I use the fiber wheel to polish out the sanding marks.
Here it is after the fiber wheel. It was now time to work on the handle. I cut threads into the handle shaft. I decided to make the handle base out of a piece of aluminum. I drilled and tapped it to match the threads I cut in the shaft. And I added a counter bore to accept the wood handle. I drilled a hole through the center of a piece of dowel stick. Here's my drill press lathe setup. The dowel has a threaded rod running through it. The larger threaded rod off to the side is my tool rest. I made my own lathe chisels out of old screwdrivers. The duct tape is covering a smelly decomposing plastic handle. Here's my lathe in action. Once I got close to size, I switched to a file. So far, so good. I flip the dowel around to make the other end. Here's the fit up of the two ends. I used my drill and sander to shape the aluminum butt section and wood handle together at the same time. The handle was starting to look the way I wanted and I felt like I had everything sized correctly to allow the wrench to operate smoothly. Okay, here's what the little monkey wrench looked like before I started. And here's the finished product. I painted the wood with flat black enamel and a top coat of clear satin. I cold blued the center bar and added some flat black to the lower jaw. Chuck and I gave the remaining metal parts our flitz treatment. I assembled the handle with epoxy to keep it from twisting around or loosening. So what do you think of my resto mod? Do you think my handle design fits well with the wrench? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. So Chuck asked me why these things are called monkey wrenches. There are a couple of myths circulating on the internet. One myth is that the wrench was invented by a man named Charles Monkey. Other versions of the story have his name as Charles Monk. Loring Coe's patented the wrench commonly called the monkey wrench in 1841. The term monkey wrench was apparently already being used in England by then for adjustable coach wrenches. Another myth is that a famous African-American boxer, Jack Johnson, 
invented the wrench, and the term monkey wrench was a racial slur. Jack Johnson did patent an adjustable wrench in 1922, but this was over 80 years after the Coase patent. I was able to find published use of the term monkey wrench in an 1899 volume of The Metal Worker. I also found this interesting passage in an 1889 book, Bible Animals and the Lessons Taught by Them. In the chapter on the monkey, the author explains the word monkey was often used to describe smaller imitations of larger things. As an example, the author defines a monkey wrench as a little wrench which is made in imitation of a larger one. The author goes on to explain how the expression to monkey had come to mean to imitate. This got me thinking about how an adjustable wrench is able to imitate many different sizes of fixed draw wrenches, just like a monkey.